Welcome to this episode of Best of America by Horseback. I'm Tom C. Where we live here in Virginia, we are blessed to be surrounded by so much history. This is the place we do cattle drives and our horseback trail rides. On this very spot, there was a Native American village 8,000 years ago. We often ride our guests to this spot to honor that history. On this episode, we've invited Native American historians to verify and offer a blessing to this sacred ground. Our cattle pastures and fields are at the foot of the Blue Ridge Mountains. We trail ride through these fields where thousands of cavalry soldiers and officers camped during the Civil War. They gathered for what would be the largest cavalry engagement in American history at Brandy Station. You can also see the house where General George Armstrong Custer spent his honeymoon and served as his headquarters during the Civil War. We will also honor the legacy of American frontiersman, explorer, and legislator Daniel Boone. During the Cherokee Indian Wars, he moved his family within a mile of this spot. We will trail ride the original fields where he worked and hauled tobacco to nearby ports to be shipped to England. We celebrated Boone Days at the farm to honor this early American folk hero, with mountain men, Native Americans, and many crafters who represent the type of craft that was done here during that time. We also carefully restocked the small mountain stream here with native trout, which are making a comeback under the tree canopy that we have preserved along the stream, keeping the waters cooler and allowing them to thrive. We invited our friends from Trout Unlimited to demonstrate to the old and to the young alike the art of fly fishing. We enjoy blending history with so many of the places we trail ride. We hope you'll enjoy the history here at our home and or farm in Culpeper, Virginia. You stay tuned, we'll be right back. Part of this show is brought to you by Mill Creek Manufacturing, makers of the first compact and stainless steel manure spreaders. They also make spin groomer arena rakes and now a new line of outdoor power equipment like the Mighty Ox log splitters and wood chippers. All top quality, high value equipment, all made in the USA. And by Spurs Big Fix, wound, skin, and hoof treatment. The more you use it, the more you'll love it. On this episode of Best of America by Horseback, we are riding with friends and exploring the vast history associated with a farm in Culpeper, Virginia, known as Andorra Farm, home to Pat and Tom C. History is something they love and seek to preserve through sharing it with others. Last year, they hosted the first Boone Days event at Andorra Farm celebrating frontiersman, explorer, legislator, and the first American folk hero, Daniel Boone. Wishing to provide his small family with a life of lesser hardship and a little greater safety, Daniel Boone, that great trailblazer, left North Carolina and headed to Virginia to settle in none other than Culpeper County and more specifically, in this very area where Andorra Farm is situated. Boone's daughter, Rebecca, was born in Culpeper. It is believed he made his living as a teamster, hauling tobacco grown on Andorra Farm and other area farms to nearby seaports for shipment to England. As part of the public celebration, Tom invited members of the American Mountain Men Association to set up a camp and give long rifle sharpshooting demonstrations. Everything from their clothing to the camp was authentic to the time period and similar to what Boone would have had during his explorations across the mountains and into Kentucky, which was originally part of Virginia. Part of the weekend celebrations included a trail ride and a blessing of an ancient American Indian site discovered on Andorra Farm. We're gonna do what the uh, Siouan speaking peoples would have done here to honor the site. You always honor Mother Earth, you always honor Father Sky. And you always honor the four directions from sun comes up, the south is where the healing and the plant, the west is black. So if you look around my altar here, you'll see the various colors, red, white, black, and yellow. Historian and retired college professor, Dr. Joel Tate, conducted the blessing of the site with singing and the ceremonial spreading of tobacco 
generally performed by a young Indian girl. Songs were in the Lakota language, honoring the Manahoic Sioux that were documented here by Captain John Smith in his diaries and maps. Dr. Tate also told writers about the evidence that indicates the presence of Paleo-Indians here around 11,550 B.C. The oldest man-made object that I have came from down here at Brooks Run. They were doing these pits, or test pits, and they found this vein of jasper going through. This was a very, very valuable uh, tool-making stone. The last time a man put his hand on this probably was 11,500 B.C. As part of the ceremony, John Daigle, a member and national director of the American Mountain Men Association, portrayed a young Native American dancing in a rope circle, performing a celebration dance with a bow and arrow. John said it could be a celebration of life, a good harvest, or anything positive. After the blessing of the Indian village, riders continued on a tour of the farm through the fields where tobacco was once the major crop. As they passed by the barns, they were welcome to stop and visit the blacksmith, or the quilters, the spinners and weavers, and the bread makers. Many of the crafters of that era were represented by local artisans, like blacksmith Mark Bowe. So you pick up a blank piece of metal and you already have the plans in your head for what you're going to turn it into. So you're a scientist, artist, <laughs> engineer, and all of the above, is that pretty accurate? Pretty much, yeah. And it took, uh, it took about 10 years uh, of apprenticeship for, uh, for a blacksmith, for a young, a young boy, he'd be uh, eight or 10 years old. And because, uh, uh, you know, there was no YouTube back then. Back in the Daniel Boone days, I guess they did everything, including making the nails for people. It, it depended on location. Uh, if you were in a city, uh, those blacksmiths tended to uh, specialize. So you'd have you'd have one blacksmith shop that was uh, that was devoted to farrier work. Uh, you'd have other blacksmith shops that were uh, devoted strictly to cutlery. Uh, some that made hardware, nails and, and hinges and and that kind of stuff. So, but when you got out in the country, uh, the the plantation blacksmith or the or the farm, the country the country blacksmith, yeah, he would do he would do all of those things. Or the Fredericksburg spinners and weavers who demonstrated how yarn was spun from wool on antique spinning wheels and how that yarn was woven into rugs, blankets, or fabric for clothing. Members of the Madison Quilting Guild demonstrated how quilts were made by hand from leftover fabric and Moving Meadows Farm demonstrated making fresh bread. As the trail ride continued, Tom and Kristen conveyed the Civil War history that happened on this farm as they rode through the field where thousands of men camped during the Civil War and across a strategic ford on Mountain Run Stream used by both Union and Confederate troops during several major battles in the area. When Best of America by Horseback returns, we will see evidence of these battles and encampments from artifacts found on Andorra Farm. We'll be right back. Come to Louisiana and I'll show you some beautiful campgrounds and trails. Trails that lead to some of the best music in the whole world. Played by some of the best musicians in the whole world. Louisiana's calling. And she's using her outside voice. Visit louisianatravel.com today and plan our trip. Because around here, you're never far from a good time. Best of America by Horseback is at Andor Farm, Tom C.'s farm in Culpeper, Virginia, where Tom holds many events throughout the year, from the annual gathering in the spring, cattle drives throughout the year, Boone Day celebration, team penning practices, and other events. This farm was right in the middle of many of the battles fought in the Culpeper area during the Civil War. 
thousands of cavalry troops camped here before and after the largest cavalry battle in American history, the Battle of Brandy Station. Many people have strong opinions about relic hunting and metal detecting and history. We feel battlefields are sacred ground that need to have the deepest respect. On our farm, we have restricted metal detecting for these reasons. However, the history on this farm is so vast and rich, we did allow an organized relic hunt with restrictions and respect for this hallowed ground. It's a medium tone, and my detector's given a, a number and a symbol for what it might be. And it's in the 40s range, 40s to 50s, which could be a bullet or a button or a bottle cap. And so I'll pinpoint it. Okay, so I know it's right there and it gives me a depth of two and a half inches. So it's right there at about two inches. So I want to preserve the yard. The yard is really nice. So I'll dig a plug and try to preserve the grass. Okay, so I dug my little plug. And I'm checking for arrowheads as I dig too. It's very common for us to find arrowheads in these. Then I have a pinpointer, which is a little handheld like they use in the airport to look for, look for guns and stuff. And I'll check the hole. And there is a beautiful button. Look at that. Oh, very nice. Outstanding this button right there. This wasn't pre-dug. This is all straight shot. So this is what we're looking for. This might be very old. I'm, I'm not an expert on buttons, but it's the great seal. And I want to be careful not to rub it or scratch it. We're going to clean that up and be very careful on that one. You want to take a look? Okay, then I'm going to cover my hole and put these these grass slivers back in. And what we'll do is later, we'll clean it and identify it and, and get a positive ID on that. Uh, when I find things, it's, it's like, a, it's, to me, it's like being in a time machine because we're touching history. And like the last person that might have touched these musket balls or buttons, that was 150 years ago. I don't sell my artifacts. I founded our group. It's called Southeastern Pennsylvania Historical Recovery Group. And now we have over 100 members. And we are constantly contacted by archaeologists. And uh, we continue to uh, strive to learn more about history because we just love history. That's what it's all about for us. And we've been working hand in hand with archaeologists on three separate occasions now. And we're building um, inroads into the archaeological community and gaining trust. And our expertise is, is noted and they, they really appreciate what we do for them. I used to teach history and American history and, and that's one of the things, if you can just find those artifacts in 50 years, they're going to be gone. And you're pulling that history out of the ground to let people look at it. Most interesting thing you've found you're proud of? Um, yesterday, this was my first official hunt yesterday, I found a belt buckle. So, and they said it was in around the 1800s, so. It, uh, some guys go a long, long time and never find anything like that, did you? Uh, that little boy that showed up here, he dug up a sword, did you see that? I did see the sword, he, he had really good luck. Sometimes relic hunters all their lives look for that type of thing. Kid just getting started, no. very patient. Yep. Before I came here, I was doing some history research, but I did find a picture of all the generals with all their swords, and I said to my buddy, boy, wouldn't it be nice did to Did you fly? see the engraving on there presented no. to R.E. Lee? No. I don't know, you didn't see wouldn't that. Wouldn't that be nice, huh? <laughs> my, oh my, that'd be great. In, well, Virginia, of course, was the most fought over state uh, during the Civil War. And Culpeper is right up there in probably the top five counties uh, seeing action. The county lay halfway between the capitals of the opposing armies, Washington, D.C., Richmond, Virginia, possessed ample supplies of foodstuffs for both man and beast, and that was incredibly important to the armies, was located on a major railway with four stations in the county, and was protected on two sides of a triangular landmass by the Rappahannock and Rapidan rivers. I always compare them with like having a moat around your castle.
For these reasons, Culpepper would find herself on the hot seat repeatedly. The artifacts that were found during the hunt tell a story of those who were here from early America, colonial times, the Civil War era, to modern day. They now have a chance to be preserved, viewed, and touched, and to educate future generations. It's fun to learn about the history of what you find, like the research I did to find out what kind of cannonball this was. Uh, it gets you into history a lot, and it enables you to show people pieces of the history. I, I've never sold anything I found. I just like to show it to my kids and grandkids and to friends and guests and to explain about it like I'm doing here to you here today. It's an educational experience for a lot of people. And to see and hold something like this is a piece of, it's, it makes history interesting. I'm just out here. I'm focused on what I'm doing and what my goal is. And I also try to put myself in the position of, I mean, knowing there was an encampment here. It was like, well, if I was here at that time, maybe where would I want to be, or where would I want to go, or would I want to sit under a tree, or would I want to be, take a drink from the creek? And those are the areas that I like to focus on. You just, you just start thinking about what happened here. And like if you find, when you find a, a three ringer or something, every time you pull one of those out of the ground, you, you just think, wow, somebody, somebody was in a war here. Somebody was walking through here, fighting a war and drop this. It's just, it's, the feeling is just surreal. You, mean, Matthew, you and your dad were kind of hunting by yourself. After you found the sword, did you notice that all the other relic hunters were like ants at a picnic showing up to where you were looking? Yes. <laughs> so we were just hunting um, and we found this and then like five minutes later, a big storm of people <laughs> came over. <laughs> Do you think they were a little teeny bit jealous? Yeah, most likely. <laughs> had you been interested in history all your life, or had, after you started relic hunting, you became more interested in history? Well, um, I used to be into history a lot, but definitely since I started relic hunting, I've been a lot more involved, and I liked it a lot more. And when you go home and you go to school, are you going to tell them that you found the sword? that most relic hunters never find in their lifetime, but you found a sword on the greatest cavalry battlefield, Brandy Station in Stevensburg, and where Custer rode through on a charge, you found a saber. Yeah, I'm probably gonna rack. That's gonna be a neat show and tell. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, congratulations to you. Well, thank you. Part of this show is, uh, is dedicated to the cavalry officers and so forth. Your knowledge of the cavalry and being here on the greatest battlefield of the cavalry in the Civil War. Send uh, chills up your spine or? Oh yeah, always. We always like to say a little prayer out in the field. When we're doing it, it's magical. Tucker Trail Saddles has been outfitting riders in ultimate trail comfort for 40 years. Extensive research has led Tucker to design trees for unrestricted movement and exceptional fit for the horse. With a patented gel cush seat, pre-turned fenders, and ergo balance stirrups to relieve joint fatigue, the all-new classic Tucker saddle sets the standard for comfort on the trail. Ride one and feel the difference that makes Tucker the premier trail saddle for ultimate comfort. If you are interested in learning more about Best of America by Horseback, visit our website at bestofamericabyhorseback.com. There you can view our show schedule on RFD TV, learn how to join us for upcoming rides and events, benefits of our trail club and how to join, find riding locations and dude ranches by state, shop the online store for Best of America by Horseback logo gear, read our monthly newsletter to stay up to date, and learn about our sponsors and their quality products. It's all here at bestofamericabyhorseback.com. Best of America by Horseback is at Andorra Farm, Tom C.'s home in Culpeper, Virginia. His farm is located in an area rich in history, from the largest set of dinosaur tracks ever discovered in North America to evidence of ancient Native American camps dating back to 11,500 BC. It was a strategic location during the American Civil War and, 100 years earlier, home to Daniel Boone and his family. 
To honor explorer and frontiersman Daniel Boone, Tom held the first Boone Days celebration at Andor Farm. There were mountain men, Native American interpreters, blacksmiths, crafters, and historians. Boone was among many dreamers and visionaries who saw Culpeper as a land of promise. For those who have studied Culpeper's history, it comes as no surprise that Boone would think of it as an appealing place to settle. Part of the weekend included a colonial meal cooked and served by our staff in period clothing. All of the food prepared would have been readily available in this area in the 1760s. Fishing was an important food source to both early Native Americans and frontiersmen like Daniel Boone. Mountain Run, a small tributary of the Rappahannock River, runs through the middle of Andor Farm and is still a source of recreation and food. Jay Lovering, president of the North American chapter of Trout Unlimited, brought several members to the Boone Day celebration to give fly fishing demonstrations and one-on-one -on -one instruction. Really, a native fish in here is called a fall fish. They're a fish that's on the line, of all, all the fall lines for coming off the little mountain here called the Shenandoah Mountains. They're prehistoric, they got split tails, and they grow to anywhere from, from eight inches to 15 inches. They weigh a pound, pound and a half, bend this little tiny fly rod right around. This is a very light, light outfit, a two weight, for those people who knows what a two weight is, like it's an ultra light fly rod. And this is so when I catch the little bluegills, it feels like monsters. For more information on Boone Days, cattle drives, team penning, and other events at Andorra Farm in Culpeper, Virginia, you can call 540-829-9555 or follow us on Facebook at Andorra Farm. <laughs>